Previously, I made a video on basics of heartbeats in system design, a crucial mechanism for ensuring systems are alive and responsive. Microservices-based applications often use heartbeats or health checks to enable orchestrators, schedulers, and performance monitors to track the multitude of services. If services cannot send an I am alive signal either on demand or on schedule, your application might detect failures too late, potentially leading to cascading failures that cause major outages. In a typical architecture, services regularly send reports about their status, which are then aggregated to provide a comprehensive view of the application's health. For example, if you're using Kubernetes, health information is sent to the orchestrator's cluster, which can automatically terminate or restart unhealthy instances. This health information enables the orchestrator to react dynamically and keep the overall system stable. Sometimes a service might be running but unable to handle request. Take for instance, a newly started service that takes time to initialize. Say your consumer service takes around 10 seconds to connect its messaging and database adapters. Routing HTTP requests to it during initialization is pointless since the service isn't ready to process them yet. In this case, a readiness probe like those available in Kubernetes can delay traffic until the service is prepared. Without such a mechanism, your users might experience failed requests during the initialization phase. A service can also fail internally while still running. If consumer service this time facing an issue where it runs out of database connections due to a bug, although it is still operational, it's unable to handle new requests. Without a health check, the deployment infrastructure may keep routing traffic to this faulty instance, leading to poor user experiences and potential data loss. This is where liveness probes come in handy, as used in systems like Kubernetes. A liveness probe can detect this failure and terminate the service instance and create a new one to replace it. A general practical solution to these scenarios is implementing a health check endpoint in your services. For example, Spring Boot Actuator, a Java library, implements Actuator Health Endpoint, returning 200 when the service is healthy and 503 when it's not. The deployment infrastructure such as Kubernetes periodically pings this endpoint to determine the state of service and takes appropriate action if it is unhealthy. Similarly, the healthchecks.net library provide an endpoint like slash hc for checking the health of services in a .NET microservices architecture. The deployment infrastructure periodically invokes this endpoint to determine the health of the service instance and takes the appropriate action if it is unhealthy. A great example of how this works in practice is in system where a service needs to verify its connection to a database. The health check code can execute a test query against the database. If successful, it returns an HTTP 200 status code. And if the connection fails, it returns an HTTP 500 or another failure code, indicating that the service is unhealthy. In more complex cases, you can run synthetic transactions, simulating actual client interactions with the service to ensure everything from APIs to backend systems is functioning as expected. In this figure, a service implements a health check endpoint, which is periodically invoked by the deployment infrastructure to determine the health of the service instance. A health check request handler typically tests the service instance's connections to external services. It might, for example, execute a test query against a database. If all tests succeed, health check request handler returns a healthy response, such as an HTTP 200 status code. And if any of them fails, it returns an unhealthy response, such as an HTTP 500 status code. Health check request handler might simply return an empty HTTP response with the appropriate status code or it might return a detailed description of the health of each of the adapters. The detailed information is useful for troubleshooting, but because it may contain sensitive information, some frameworks such as Spring Boot Actuator let you configure the level of detail in the health endpoint response. Now, there are two issues you need to consider when using health checks. The first is the implementation of the endpoint, which must report back on the health of the service instance. And the second issue is how to configure the deployment infrastructure to invoke the health check endpoint. Let us first look at how to implement the endpoint. The code that implements the health check endpoint must somehow determine the health of the service instance. One approach is to verify that the service instance can access its external infrastructure services. How to do this depends on the infrastructure service. The health check code can, for example, verify that it is connected to an RDBMS by obtaining a database connection and executing a test query. A more elaborate approach is to execute a synthetic transaction that simulates the invocation of the service's API by a client. This kind of health check is more thorough, but it's likely to be more time consuming to implement and take longer to execute. Spring Boot Actuator comes with a sensible default set of health checks based on the infrastructure services your application uses. 
For instance, if your service uses a JDBC data source, Spring Boot automatically configures a health check that runs a test query. If it is using RabbitMQ, the system checks if the RabbitMQ server is up and running. However, you can further customize health checks by defining custom health checks using health indicator interface. The interface defines a health method which is called by the implementation of the actuator health endpoint. It returns the outcome of the health check. You can also customize this behavior by implementing additional health checks for your service. You implement a custom health check by defining a class that implements the health indicator interface. And finally, a health check endpoint isn't much of use if anybody calls it. When you deploy your service, you must configure the deployment infrastructure to invoke the endpoint. How you do that depends on specific details of your deployment infrastructure. For example, you can configure some service registries such as Netflix Eureka to invoke the health check endpoint in order to determine whether traffic should be routed to the service instance or not. You can also configure Docker and Kubernetes to invoke a health check endpoint. Be sure to check out my previous video on Heartbeats and System Design for more insights into the foundation of health monitoring. And stay tuned as we dive deeper into the best practices of microservices architecture.